Every time I mention this guy, Alexander Ryshenko, in one of my Star Trek videos, I end up getting the business from people who think I'm being too hard on him. Why the hate for Alexander? Why am I so hard on Alexander? Why don't I show more empathy for Alexander? Well, I don't like getting the business. So, in an attempt to balance the scales a bit, I'm going to take some of that business I've been getting for my vicious, gratuitous, and in my opinion, hilarious mocking of poor Alexander and redirect it at the character many of you hold responsible for how Alexander turned out. His father, Worf. Which came first, the disappointing son or the aloof absentee father? I mean, literally, the answer is the father, because how would the son even exist if the father didn't come at some point? But... That aside, philosophically speaking, it's more of an open question, kind of a chicken or the egg scenario. After all, Worf can't be held entirely responsible for how Alexander turned out, not directly anyway, since he very wisely wasn't there for most of Alexander's life. But what about the parts of Alexander's life where Worf was present? I've talked about some of this before in a previous video I did on parents in the Trek franchise, but for this one, I want to focus in on Worf and his role as Alexander's father, because I don't want anyone saying that I turn a blind eye to the sins and shortcomings of my favorites. I have my faves, like Worf, and none of them are perfect. Except Tilly. So with that in mind, let's take a walk down traumatic memory lane and review a brief history of Worf being a terrible father. Worf's life as a parent gets off to a less than ideal start in the fourth season TNG episode Reunion, in which Worf's old flame, Kalar, returns with a little surprise. They have a son, a love child, conceived in the heat of passion on the holodeck during Kalar's last appearance back in season two. Worf is caught off guard by this. When he and Kalar get a minute alone, he's like, I cannot believe you got pregnant and didn't even tell me. How could you be so irresponsible? Me? What about you? I thought you were on the pill. I forgot to take it that day. Kalar's like, look, I'm sorry for not telling you about the kid until now, but let's be adults about this. We can work out a shared custody arrangement. How about this? You take Alexander on weekdays and weekends, and I'll get murdered. And that's what happens. Worf ships Alexander off to live on Earth with Worf's parents. And look, I know a lot of you Alexander stands count that against Worf, accuse him of pawning his child and his parental responsibilities off on the kid's grandparents. But from where I'm standing, it's maybe the best thing Worf ever did as a dad. He lives on a starship that is regularly sent into dangerous situations, that is constantly threatened with destruction. He sends his child to live somewhere else, like maybe, I don't know, every other parent with children aboard the Enterprise should do. You say sending Alexander to live on Earth makes him a bad parent? I say if more of his shipmates had any sense, it would have made him a trendsetter. Also, Worf obviously has difficulty relating to Alexander. He's not a natural parent, he's reluctant at best, so instead of keeping Alexander on the Enterprise to be raised by a distant, awkward, emotionally ill-equipped father, he sends him to Earth and the warm and welcoming embrace of his grandparents. That Worf, what a bastard. Anyway, back to Worf being a shitty father. Eventually, starting with the fifth season episode, New Ground, Alexander returns to live on the Enterprise. Worf's mom brings him back like, we're old, we want to retire, raise your own goddamn kid. Worf enrolls Alexander in the ship school, a humiliating experience where Worf is revealed as not knowing his own son's birthday. It turns out Alexander is exhibiting some potentially serious behavioral problems, stealing, lying, that sort of thing. His teacher tries to talk to Worf about this, but Worf refuses to even listen to the possibility that his son is anything other than a perfectly honorable little Klingon. Worf winds up looking like a sucker again when Alexander flatly denies taking a toy dinosaur from class, only for Worf to find the dinosaur in Alexander's pocket a moment later. I send you to live on Earth and you run my parents ragged, I let you come back here to stay with me, and I ignore your obvious emotional issues, and that blows up in my face too. What options are even left at this point? Alexander takes Worf's favorite sword and goes to the holodeck to play Worf's favorite program. 
Worf walks in on him like, oh, no, 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 to hell with this. You do not get to help yourself to my stuff and come in here and fight Skeletor. Your mother and I fought Skeletor the day you were conceived, and seeing you in here is just weird in a way I wasn't ready for and will probably never be okay with, so go home and pack your shit because I just thought of another option. You're going to a Klingon school for Klingons. Doesn't sound like much fun for Alexander, but probably still a better option than living on the Enterprise with his inept and emotionally uninvested father. Worf changes his mind by the end of the episode, though. He rescues Alexander from a fire in the ship's bio lab, where Alexander should not have been in the first place, and later in sickbay, Worf's like, look, we've both been through a lot these last few years. Your mother got murdered, which also ruined my day when it happened, by the way. Then I sent you to Earth without even trying to get to know you. So if you would like an even greater challenge than going to that Klingon school for Klingons, you can stay here with me. And Alexander's like, okay. So Alexander becomes a permanent resident of the Enterprise D for the final few seasons of Star Trek The Next Generation and pops up in about half a dozen episodes which gives Worf plenty of space to show what a lousy parent he is. For example, in Ethics, Worf is seriously injured and spends most of the episode thinking he is permanently paralyzed and contemplating ending his life. He bans Alexander from his bedside, not wanting to appear weak, choosing his own pride over the needs of his frightened young child. He eventually comes around and the episode ends with Alexander by Worf's side during physical therapy, though I'm not sure what help he's going to be. He'll probably just get in the way. Can someone get Get him out of here. Then there's cost of living, during which Worf is guilty of perhaps his gravest failure as a parent, allowing Alexander to spend a significant amount of time with Luoxana Troy, an all-consuming vortex of toxic ego and vanity who threatens to destroy everything that comes near her. Thankfully, Worf and Alexander survive being pulled into Luoxana's orbit, escaping after having to share a mud bath on the holodeck, a relatively mild fate all things considered. But it could have been worse, Worf. Letting your kid hang out with Loxana Troy should be grounds for losing custody. Unless that was his plan all along. Alexander appears in a couple more episodes, Imaginary Friend, Rascals, but they aren't really Alexander episodes, and there is no Worf the Bad Dad content to be found in them. Then we come to Season 6's A Fistful of Datas, where Worf, Alexander, and Counselor Troy find themselves trapped in the holodeck after a malfunction has replaced all of the characters in Alexander's Old West program with holograms of Lieutenant Commander Data. And, you know, this is a fun episode, and there's a lot of Worf and Alexander stuff in this episode, but, and call me an apologist if you must, but... I don't think Worf is that bad of a dad in this one either. Sure, Alexander gets kidnapped by the bad guys, and thanks to the malfunction, the holodeck safety protocols are disabled, which means Alexander's life is actually in danger. But that's not really Worf's fault, is it? He doesn't learn about the malfunctions until after Alexander has been abducted. Up until then, he just assumes everything that happens is part of the program's story. Worf even spares the life of the villain when he realizes Alexander is watching. That's some King Dad shit right there. It is not, however, representative of Worf's overall parental performance. As we see, in Season 7 of TNG, when there's a whole episode about what a crummy father Worf is. It's titled, Firstborn. Worf says to Alexander, Hey, so you're old enough to go through the first Klingon rite of ascension and begin your training to become a warrior, so let's get on that. But Alexander's like, Nope. My dead mom said I don't have to do any Klingon stuff if I didn't want to. Peace! Hoping to inspire more of an interest in the Klingon stuff, Worf takes Alexander to a nearby Klingon colony, where they're holding a festival in celebration of this one-time Kalos wanna fight or something. I don't know, the Klingons think it's a big deal. They go, and Alexander gets into it. He's having a good time. He digs the Klingon history and culture he's learning. He makes friends with some of the other Klingon kids who are there. It's an awesome experience, until someone tries to assassinate Worf. Luckily, Worf is bailed out by this dude, Kimtar, an advisor to Worf's family who Worf knows but has somehow never actually met. Kimtar tells Worf that the Duras sisters are trying to kill him, but don't worry, old Kimtar is here to watch your back. And Kimtar is like, hey, as long as I'm here, 
Why don't I get Alexander started on that whole warrior training thing? Sound good? Good. Only not good, because Alexander doesn't have fun training with Kim Tar, and now he's off the Klingon stuff again. At this point, if you haven't seen this episode, you might be wondering where is the Worf the Bad Dad angle? It turns out, Kim Tar is actually Alexander from the future. Alexander grew up, decided to become a diplomat instead of a warrior, and future Worf was murdered on the floor of the Klingon High Council Chambers, with Alexander standing there helpless to do anything but watch. So Alexander did what any son would have done in that situation. He traveled 40 years into the past, assumed a new identity, and intervened in his own childhood in an attempt to rewrite his personal history. Confronted with this grieving, heartbroken, wayward future version of his son, Worf thinks, okay, maybe as a father I made a misstep or two. He tells future Alexander to go back to his own time and continue to be true to himself and to work for peace. Then Worf goes to young Alexander and says, you know what? If you really don't want to be a warrior, if you'd rather be, oh, I don't know, let me just pick something completely random, a diplomat, that's fine with me. You be who you are. And I'll love you no matter what, because you're my son. Alexander's like, okay, then I'll just continue to be a huge disappointment. And that's where we pick him up a few years later in season six of Deep Space Nine and the episode Sons and Daughters. So it's during the Dominion War and Worf is serving on a Klingon ship with General Martok and they're reviewing some new recruits. And one of the new recruits is Alexander. Later, Worf and Martok are talking and Martok's like, that's your kid, right? And Worf's like, oh, yes, and man, I don't know. I tried to push him to become a warrior, and he didn't want to, so eventually I accepted that and said I'd support him no matter what he wanted to be, and now here he is trying to be a warrior again. I mean, I can't even with this kid. Worf meets with Alexander, and Alexander insists that he's here to be a warrior, not to prove himself to Worf or to anyone else. Worf's like, we both know you're a shitty little wuss who doesn't belong here, so I'm going to expect twice as much from you as from everyone else. You got it? Alexander's like, yes, sir. And then when Alexander gets into a fight in the mess hall, Worf jumps in like, don't you stab my precious baby boy. Martok meets with Worf like, what are you doing? Take this the way it's meant as constructive criticism from a place of love, but you are the worst goddamn father I've ever seen. You're either ignoring and abandoning him or rushing into his rescue. Pick one. Since this is a war, you should probably try to teach Alexander how to fight so he doesn't get himself or any of the actually useful people on the ship killed. But other than that, you've really got to let the kid stand or fall on his own. If he takes the occasional stabbing hay, as they say on the Klingon homeworld, say la vie. He's got to grow up sometime and you've got to let him. Worf tries to have Alexander transferred to another ship, but Alexander gets all up in his face about it, like, oh, sure, go ahead and do what you always do and send me away. Worf's like, how does sending you away from life-threatening situations make me a bad father? There's a battle. Alexander helps to save the ship by repairing a dangerous plasma leak, but he also somehow manages to lock himself in a corridor, making a fool of himself to the rest of the crew. But Worf's like, I'll take it. Later. He tells Alexander, look, if you want to be a warrior, that's fine with me. You be who you are, and I'll love you no matter what, because you're my son. Haven't we had this conversation already? Yes, but I think it's time you and I made a fresh start again. Again. That's more or less where we leave things with Worf and Alexander. Alexander shows up once more on DS9 for Worf's wedding to Jadzia Dax, but he doesn't really do anything other than remind us that he's kind of a klutzy dope. Historically, I have mostly blamed Worf being a terrible father on Alexander being such a zero, but now I am told that it's unfair to place responsibility for poor parenting on the child. Okay. From the Doylist perspective, that is, the perspective of someone evaluating Star Trek as a work of fiction and Worf as a character within that fiction, much of Worf's shitty parenting can be attributed to the various writers of TNG and DS9 opting for narrative expediency. Worf sends Alexander back to Earth to live with his grandparents at least twice, once 
right after Kalar shows up with him and then gets killed, and once sometime between the end of TNG and Worf showing up as a regular on DS9. Both times this happens because it's just simpler to not have Alexander around. However, when viewed from the Watsonian, or in-universe perspective, Worf repeatedly sending Alexander to live with someone else and treating him as a burden when he is around is kind of awful. Think how this poor kid must feel. His mother, the only parent he's actually known to this point in his life, is killed. His father, who he just met and who doesn't seem too thrilled to see him, sends him to Earth, a planet he's never been to, to live with his grandparents, who he's never met. And then after a couple of years, they send him back to his father, who keeps him for a few years and then sends him back to the grandparents. That's bound to mess a kid up to do things to their self-esteem, to make them feel like there's no place they belong, no place they're truly wanted. Ultimately, that's Worf's fault. He's Alexander's father. He's responsible for his upbringing, and he only makes things worse with his attempts to force Alexander into becoming a warrior when that's clearly not where the kid's interests lie. I know all parents have dreams for their kids, and sometimes it's difficult to let those dreams go when the kid's life begins to take a different path, but here's the deal. If your kid turns out to be a dud, that's probably your fault. And once it becomes obvious that their status as a dud is going to be permanent, and with Alexander that was obvious, you know, pretty much immediately, your job isn't to push them into things you think they should do. They're just going to fuck it up anyway. They're a dud and wind up feeling even worse about themselves, which will make them an even bigger dud. All you can do with your pitiful failure of a child is love them and accept them as the underwhelming misfire that they are. But as you love and accept them, remember this, and Worf, pay attention because I'm talking to you, buddy. Your kid may be a letdown, but it's not because they let you down. It's because you let them down. We don't get to see what happens with them after Alexander's last appearance on DS9, but hopefully their, what, third try at a fresh start takes, and Worf and Alexander are able to build a healthy and mutually fulfilling relationship as father and son. I'd also like to think that eventually Alexander is able to find something to do with his life that makes him happy and gives him a sense of purpose, a career where his bumbling nature and general gross incompetence won't present a barrier to success. Something like a TV network executive or the CEO of a tech company. 